Okay, thank you so much, Rod, for, for the introduction. Yeah, I, I'm Mojtaba, I, I'm from K. Leuven. So my presentation will be a bit different from the, you know, rest of the rest of the talks in the, in the session because, yeah, it's more or less related to life sciences or teaching engineering. Uh, I want to talk a bit about the, the mathematical model uh, my, my, my PhD work, which is related to mathematical modeling of uh, biodegradation behavior of uh, biomaterials. So, uh, yeah, I start with a, with a very short introduction on biodegradable metals, which is the main focus of my work. Uh, talking about biodegradable metals, we are usually referring to magnesium, zinc, and iron. And we mean that they gradually disappear when you put the material inside the body they gradually disappear or be they ab be absorbed by the body and they eventually get replaced by by the tissues by the, the newly formed tissue or bone and this this behavior makes them really suitable for for various applications especially regarding by considering the fact that they have great mechanical and biological properties and by biological properties i mean like high level of uh, biocompatibility and also uh, being uh, having positive contributions to the to the metabolism of the body but then the problem is for various applications we need to control the release rate of these materials by trial and error in implant design and also you know the, 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 the degradation behavior should be tuned uh, to the rate of the generation of the bone or tissue as I said, for example, for orthopedic applications or cardiovascular applications or, or such stuff. So the main, the main question that we are trying to address is we want to optimize and tune this degradation behavior, which is usually done in, in a set of, uh, we call in vivo or in vitro studies, and we mean in, in, in the lab or in the body experiments. But we want to do that you know, in, a, in another way and we want to match and tune the degradation behavior to the rate of regeneration of new tissue or bone. This can be solved, and it is indeed solved, and this, this objective is achieved in this project by mathematical modeling of the biodegradation be, uh, phenomenon, which can be also be coupled with, uh, you know, uh, other mathematical model of tissue growth or cell proliferation and these kind of processes. So we have two coupled uh, models and at the same time we can also consider environmental effects like the effects of the experimental setup in a lab or the effects of, uh, of human body or animal bodies for, for real uh, we call in vivo tests. So in order to do that, you know, this is a traditional approach, traditional workflow for computational modeling that underlying sciences are converted to mathematical models, and this, these mathematical models are converted to computational models. And by underlying science, I mean the chemistry of biodegradation, which is the main focus of this uh, in the presentation, uh, and also the physics of perfusion. Perfusion is, you know, I can uh, if I want to tell it, tell you quickly what is perfusion. Perfusion means fluid flow, but in natural, in life sciences, in experimental life sciences, in in a in you know experimental setup, perfusion is usually the fluid that you you know the circulation of fluid inside bioreactors that you put cells inside these bioreactors and this perfusion supplies, uh, you know oxygen or any other kind of food or uh, you know nutrients that the cells need, and in order to capture that effect inside bioreactors, we need to add physics of perfusion or fluid flow. And also the biology of tissue growth or cell proliferation and sought by reactors and the body, as I said. So these are the underlying sciences in this work. But the main focus of, the pro of this presentation will be on the chemistry of biodegradation. And for mathematical modeling, for mathematical representation of these phenomena, we take advantage of part partial differential equations. That's very common approach, which are indeed mostly reaction diffusion convection equations as well as Navier-Stokes equations for the perfusion, and also as I will uh, describe a, a bit later, uh, the interface tracking, because we wanna see how the, the, the implant or a medical device evolves geometri geometrically over time. 
And a computational model, uh, we, for conducting that, we use, for constructing a computational model, we use a combination of finite elements method and finite difference, as well as uh, taking advantage of scientific computing libraries and open source solvers. So the chemistry of degradation to, in order to capture that, the model should take into account these steps. The first one is the chemistry of dissolution of metallic implant, in this case, a magnesium implant. So it you know, reduces water and then it releases different ions. And then by combination of different ions and the reduced components, a, a, a protective film is formed on, 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 on top of the surf, on, on the surface of the metal which you know, consequently reduces the rate of degradation. But at the same time, there are you know, certain components in the fluid or solution or inside the body which contribute to you know, an increase in the rate of degradation. So the model should also capture that effect. They can either eliminate the film or increase you know, the, 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 the chemical reaction rates. And at the same time, it's also important to capture the change of pH. This is very crucial for both in vitro and in vivo studies. But in order to capture these things in, in mathematics and mathematical representation, we, you know, this is, this is the simplest form of the chemical reactions we can have there. The chemistry is much more complicated, but assuming that this is, you know, the reactions, two reactions occurring with K1 and K2, and by having these state variables for magnesium, for the for uh, protective film, for chloride ion as you know one of the one of the ions that contributes to to the elimination of the film or increase in the degradation rate, and also OH ions, uh, hydroxide ions, which contribute to the change of pH. We can have this system this system of equations. So we have four partial differential equations for each P, for each component, which have. Uh, which has the diffusion part as well as the reaction parts and also effect of effect of the protection uh, protection film in a in a form of uh, uh, pe penalty terms. So this is indeed our system. But in addition to this, uh, we need. Uh, uh, we should consider the fact that these diffusion coefficients are, uh, you know, non-constant because the form protective film on a surface is indeed a porous material and the effective coefficient should be calculated by interpolation. By doing that, we mean that when the, uh, the concentration of film is zero, that's a normal diffusion coefficient, but when it increases to you know, a, certain, um, a certain value, that is the maximum uh, value of this protection film that can be calculated by according to its per, uh, density, it has, also, it has a value uh, correlated to the porosity. And then by interpolating that, this is indeed the effective diffusion rate that should be inserted in the equation that makes it be, make the equation a bit more complicated. But what is also crucial in this research is capturing the interface, as I said, because uh, we want to see how the geometry of the implant or scaffold evolves over time. So this is indeed crucial to have to, to consider the, the, the interface between these uh, the implant and the medium or implant and a surrounding environment in the body. And to do that, we have an, a, a mathematical representation of the interface in which we correlate the, the, the velocity of the interface to the release of material. So materials release and the, and, the velocity and the interface evolves. In order to do that, we take advantage of the, you know, the techniques for implicitly defining the the mathematical interface, the moving interface. And for doing that, we take advantage of level set method. For, for formulating that for this specific kind of applications, we consider the fact that the, we have a profile in, in the concentration when it starts to release the saturation concentration as well as the concentration inside the body, in, sorry, inside the scaffold. And then by having the, the com comparing these two and also taking advantage of some of the known mass transfer principles, we can write the level set equation like this. So it's more or less a convective convection equation. And uh, yeah, so this is indeed the fifth equation to solve. And the phi function is, is in this case, a nature of the phi function is a distance function which is zero on the interface and uh, negative on the medium surrounding and positive inside the block. So we capture, we, we solve this equation each time step to see how the implant evolves 
uh, as we know that the implant surface is on the zero isocontrol of this phi function. So um, for the constraints and boundary conditions for HPD or for, for the interface tracking, I told you that it is indeed positive, negative, and zero on the surface. But for the magnesium ions transport, the boundary conditions are relatively simple. But you know, for, for all these boundary conditions, the complexity is they should be all defined implicitly on the solution of the zero and uh, zero isocontrol of five functions. So the boundary conditions are applied on the solution of another equation. And then for the protective film, we have no diffusion on the, on the solution and also zero inside the body, which makes inside the implant, which makes sense. And also no diffusion for the hydroxide and chloride ions, very, very similar and uh, uh, and a sort of isolation boundary condition on a surface. <clears throat> and then for co uh, constructing the computational model, uh, we need to discretize these PDEs as you know, with traditional techniques. So we use finite difference method for temporal derivative terms and finite element method for uh, special uh, derivatives. And uh, the mesh is, should be adaptively refined on an interface because uh, we want to increase the accuracy of computing the, the, the gradient of concentrations on the interface for increasing the accuracy of the level set equation. And a mesh is Eulerian, which I mean that there is no, you know, sort of moving mesh. This is not Lagrangian. And we label different part of the mesh with different, uh, you know, labels, uh, as I, I told you in the previous slides. And then we refine the mesh on the interface of, this, uh, of the zero isocontour of the phi function. And for implementing the computational model, a typical simulation usually contains of 10 million elements. And then uh, the, the VIC formulation should be implemented in, in, a, in a finite element library or language. For this record, I, I mean, uh, I use FreeFem, which is a domain specific language for finite element modeling. And the degrees of freedom is usually 2 million for each PDE. And we have uh, five PDEs excluding Navier-Stokes equation. And then because of this high degrees of freedom, parallelization is essential. Uh, I use uh, domain decomposition, high performance de domain decomposition, as well as high performance preconditioners. And also the post-processing will become a bit, um, you know, computational intensive and I, I have to use a parallelized uh, IO for, for this uh, as well. For the levels of implementation, which is one of the bottlenecks of this, uh, you know, general, this technique, uh, but as I said, for boundary conditions, they should be applied in a solution of another equation. So I use penalization technique for that. And then the problem of concentration oscillation. I mean, when we want to see, when we want to solve and calculate the velocity of the interface, then as we move from the bulk of material to the solution, we have a jump in the concentration and it can cause some problems. For this, we use mass lumping technique uh, you know, to overcome this issue. And then the next problem is computing the, the, the normal gradient correctly co uh, by considering the previous problem. And for doing that, the, you know, there was another t uh, a previously published technique in the literature that you can uh, go a bit higher up, I mean, in, in along the normal uh, unit vector of the surface at each point and calculate the, the the gradient of concentrations there. So in order to overcome these two problems, we use this technique. And then the problem of distancing the distance function, which is more or less, uh, you know, is you can find it, you, you will face it in any uh, kind of modeling that uh, involves level set. Uh, the level set uh, distance function becomes distorted when it's convected because it's a sort of convection equation and then you need to redistance it. We have the redistancing more or less in our uh, model, but uh, most of the cases we also can easily neglect it because the, the distortion occurs only at the regions close to the interface and, and the reason is that the, the velocity of the interface is correlated to the concentration changes. And uh, in order to compute the math loss, there are different techniques to compute the math loss in, in, you know, in, in experimental sciences. One is direct weight reduction. You can easily measure that. You can, but it requires intervene to the experiments. And also there is another technique you can 
measure the side products and uh, measure those side products, in this case, hydrogen evolution. This is indeed what we do, what we do in this research. And uh, this uh, quantity can be easily obtained from the level set output. So we integrate the equation, integrate the, the concentration of magnesium and concentration of our metallic ions in the, only the positive parts of the level set function. And then by having some you know, basic stoichiometric and taking advantage of ideal gas uh, equation, we can calculate the, the evolved uh, hydrogen. So this is indeed something that we can compare the predictions of the models to, 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 the, to the experimentally obtained values. So uh, for, in order to verify the model, you know, it, it is, is indeed visual inspection. And for doing that, first we have the, the mass transfer and the, uh, you know, the, the, the evolution of the surface. You can see that this is indeed the, the way that the material is released and the surface evolves. In this case, it shrinks. And also to, to see that if, uh, to check if the level set tracking works correctly, we can see it here, dedicated uh, uh, visualization post processing of the level set of the zero isocontour contour of the level set. So this is indeed uh, that, and it shows that, yeah, it's, it's for, for a simple screw, it works like this. So we can see that by visual inspection, the code seems to work fine. But then uh, an important step is parameter estimation because we have some parameters in the model. There are some, they are, they are a bit difficult to be obtained from experiments. First, we perform sensitivity analysis to obtain, to, you know, to, to, to separate the, the important ones. And then uh, by using a Bayesian optimization algorithm, we, we, we estimate the effective parameters values. And each optimization iteration takes several hours to com uh, complete because it requires a simulation to run. And this is in indeed another reason, essential reason for necessity of parallelization in, in the code and in the model. For, for validation, uh, this is indeed uh, the experimental setup. I don't want to go for this in details, but we have the you know immersion test. We put uh, the samples inside uh, you know, a, a chamber and then by having the the evolved hydrogen will be captured by this, you know, a smart uh, uh, experimental setup, which is done by one of our partners in Germany. And then they can calculate the evolved hydrogen uh, rate, and then they have a smooth curve for, for the degradation. We did this for, for two different uh, Solutions, uh, saline solutions, high diffusion, diffusion rate, and simulated body fluids for low diffusion rates. And then, as I said, mass loss is was calculated, was you know measured by the form hydrogen in this. And then the global pH uh, changes are also monitored and used as the validation criterion in this research. So, so, the, most, so the simulation setup uh, is aimed to mimic the experimental setup. So we have a narrow cuboid instead of ch metallic chips as a single narrow, narrow cuboid of uh, magnesium in SPF solutions, in SPF and saline solutions. And we wanted to simulate 21 hours of degradation with around 80 millions of elements. And as a result, it was paralyzed using 170 computing nodes. So this is in an initial or, yeah, graphical representation of the results. We have release of magnesium ions and a formation of a protective film on the interface. And this is indeed uh, you know, an animation of the process that shows the material release as well as the degradation. And yeah, this, this white region is nothing but uh, the, the zero isocontour of the level set function. And this is the change of pH in two different uh, diffusion regimes, high diffusion and low diffusion. You can see that in a high diffusion, we have higher pH changes. And these are the quantitative results. Good, uh, good agreement. This one is indeed something that is calibrated to obtain the uh, per effective parameters. But these are indeed solely the, the, the predictions of the model, which are very close to the uh, experimentally obtained ones. And a bit of a parallelization details. As I said, uh, the, the parallelization is essential. So like uh, lots of other finite element simulations or finite different simulations, we have high performance mesh decomposition, assigning different uh, you know, partition mesh to each CPU core. 
and then for that we used one of the commonly used techniques called uh, Schwartz method, overlapping Schwartz method, so we can see that the mesh has indeed overlapping uh, regions. And then uh, for solving the linear system of equations that is obtained from the from this um, finite element uh, weak formulation and uh, numerical integrations, we use hyperperiodic conditioners to to come to accelerate the convergence and so solution as well as a GM rest uh, iterative solver. In order to analyze the performance of this uh, parallelization, we had a similar setup to, to the previous one. This time, only three PDs are solved, and you know a high a lower number of uh, degrees of freedom for each PD. And uh, for for the benchmarking, we had weak, weak scaling. You definitely know, but you know this is just a recap on a concept that in weak scaling, you double the problem size as you increase the number of assigned cores. So we, do, we double the problem size and with two cores and then doubling that with four cores and then doubling that with eight cores. But in strong scaling, you keep the problem size constant and you just increase the number of resources. So in an ideal case, in weak scaling, you should have a constant rate, a constant efficiency, but in strong scaling, you should have increased efficiency because you keep the problem size constant. So these are these weak scaling analyses uh, that which are done for less than 10 processors just to see that how weak scaling behavior of the model works and then uh, we can see that yeah it's more or less an, an ideal case uh, but uh, yeah with uh, yeah um, more or less with a theoretical one, what yeah, uh, especially with with higher number of cores, it's not it 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 starts to have less efficiency. But for strong scaling, which is indeed a better uh, better uh, let's say criterion to compare things, it had better uh, results. We continue the the, the the scaling test to one to three hundreds of uh, MPI or CPU cores. And then these are indeed the speed off and the efficiency, which shows that yeah, a constant decrease in efficiency even in high number of uh, high number of cores. And uh, as a conclusion, I, sh I showed you how we have developed a quantitative mathematical model that can be used to uh, you know investigate the degradation behavior of uh, biodegradable metallic uh, implants, medical devices for various applications. And the re results show a good agreement between the predicted uh, and experimentally obtained uh, values for the pH changes, which was indeed the, 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 uh, the validation criterion for the model. And then uh, when uh, you know the, the chemistry of the model becomes more complicated and complete, and also with adding more uh, perfusion and also biology to the model, which is indeed added, but I, I didn't have uh, that in this uh, uh, presentation, the model can be a very good tool for in silico or let's say uh, visually investigating various aspects of biodegradation process to improve the current workflow of uh, biodegradable implant design. Thank you so much for your attention.